Everybody around here wants to feel confident about their future. We need to give them the world that they can feel confident about. We need to give them a northern Wisconsin and a state that they can feel confident in inhabiting, a place that's going to give them the opportunities, just like anybody else living in Washington, D.C., or New York City, or anywhere else, or Madison. If you're up here and you're a young person, you're going to get the same opportunities. People have got to be able to believe in their futures. And I know that the values that we have in this room, the values in the, of, the, of the candidates that you're going to support, all lead in that direction. Now I'm going to end. If you have any questions, I know that there are other people who want to talk, but if anybody has any specific questions that they want to ask me that you think would benefit the group, I'm happy to answer them at this time. I don't want to make people end up sitting here longer than they want to, but if anybody has a question, I'm happy to answer. Otherwise, I'll, I'll pass it on to Obama for America. Yeah. I guess I would just say if it's okay for me to put a little something on YouTube, maybe you could say something about uh, tribal sovereignty and about... You bet. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, could I say that now? Okay. Words matter. Words matter. We have come to a point where people feel very cavalier about throwing words around, and they believe that it, just as long as they can pronounce the word or use it in a sentence, that they embody it. The word sovereignty means something. And it means something not just literally, not just culturally, but truly spiritually. And it's a part of who I am as a non-native person, and it's a part of every native person in the state of Wisconsin, in the, in the United States. Sovereignty defines a certain set of uh, abilities and responsibilities of being a nation. Just like the United States of America can set its laws, elect its leaders, determine its own future, in context with the world, but truly determine its own future. So can the Indian nations of the United States. We have in Wisconsin 11 sovereign nations. And we are here at Lac de Flamme, a sovereign nation that has its own government, that has a, a set of responsibilities, a set of cultural values. They have their leadership. They have their own citizens. And they exist for their own good as a sovereign nation and as part of the larger world that includes other nations, including the one with, within which they live, the United States, and the world. Many people elected to office in the state of Wisconsin don't understand that. They think that sovereignty is just a, a bunch of letters strung across and it's a word, sovereignty. And they think they know it, or they pretend they know it. Um, but they don't, either they don't get it, or they don't want to get it. And right now with the mining issue, I don't know which one it is, if it's that they don't get it or if they don't want to get it. I think both are going on to a different extent, with, with, depending upon who you're dealing with. When it comes to the mining issue, the mine is going to go into the ceded territory. And the Bad River tribe, specifically, and all tribes that have a voice in what happens to the resources in the ceded territory, have the opportunity to be engaged in the lawmaking that affects those resources and the future of those resources. So what does that mean? How does that take place? Well, I think that one of the hardest things is that there really isn't any literal blueprint. But you certainly know when it's not happening. And it ain't happening when it comes to the mining law. It isn't happening. For example, there are mining hearings going on right now. And these are very appropriate things to happen. 
There are mining hearings that are being held by the Senate Committee on Mining. One of the groups invited to testify was uh, Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission. Now Glyphwick, of course, represents the tribe's interest in the health and future of the resources in the ceded territory. They were invited to come and speak. Now, some people would say, oh, there's consultation. That's, you know, we're respecting the sovereignty of the tribes. There's our consultation. They had a chance to speak. Not by my definition of sovereignty. That was, that was a bunch of people sitting at a table, very appropriately listening to information from a group of people who represent the, 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 uh, the health of the resources in the ceded territory. But it wasn't a nation-to-nation -nation consultation. It wasn't the state of Wisconsin talking to a particular sovereign tribe, both at the table, talking at, to each other as equals. That needs to happen. And again, it can, it, however um, the tribes and the state of Wisconsin decide to have it, they'll know it when they do it. But clearly, they know it isn't happening right now. I wish that there was a better way to describe what I think about sovereignty. But it is more, sovereignty is more in what you believe, what you value, who you respect, and how you behave under that relationship. And you know it isn't being respected when you, when you can see it when that doesn't happen. And I know that we, have, we can hope for and we should expect a consultation process that will respect the sovereignty of the nation, the Indian nations in the state of Wisconsin. I, I guess I'm ignorant, I claim ignorance, but um, the people that want to mine, mm -hmm. who benefits the most mm -hmm. by the profits from that type of operation? The Do the sovereign the nations? Mm -hmm. No. No, no, they, they, they don't, there's no exchange of money. Um, again, the actual physical location of the mine is not on reservation land. It's on straightforward fee simple land. It's either fee simple or it's land owned by the county. So it could be fee, could be straight ordinary fee land. It's uh, within the sea of territory. So, any exchange of money is, is exchanged between the people who own the land or the mineral rights of the land. And the people who own the mineral rights, rights are over in Duluth somewhere. And the people who bought the mineral rights or an option on the mineral light rights is this go give it taconite. And they would profit by the extraction of the resource. And there's no payment um, to anybody, payment to the people of the state of Wisconsin is made by what's in the law. It, it's what's in the law. That decides how they're going to get paid. And they're usually paid by some kind of tax. And a mine, it's very important to know, does not pay property tax. So just wipe that mm -hmm. part of it off. They pay no property tax. The only way they can pay is either by um, a net proceeds tax, which is a tax on the revenue they make, and that's once the mine is in operation and they have a profit to re report, or it's by what's called a gross tonnage, which is what they have in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. A ton comes out of the ground, you tax a ton. You tax it before it's sold. You tax it when it comes out of the earth, and then that money in Minnesota is returned to the IRRRB, the, Min the state of Minnesota, and some of it goes to the local municipalities directly. It goes to three different sources. In Wisconsin and in the bill, there was nothing like that. Um, it went, it, again, it was a net proceeds tax that was in um, the bill, SB 426, AB 426. A net proceeds tax, meaning once the mine's up and running and they report a profit, again, report a profit, they might not report a profit. They might have really big expenses, so there's no profit. 
Um, and it's only once the mine is in operation. And then even if you get revenue, in the first version of the bill, half of it had to go to the state, into the general, pur into, um, general purpose revenue, into GPF. Mm -hmm. If I could, I just want to say for the benefit of people who might not know that part of the significance of that is that if the mine were to hurt the resources, which means the hunting, the fishing, and the gathering of the uh, tribes, that um, because these are guaranteed in the treaties, that they may be able to sometimes stop mining by saying it would be destructive we, those resources belong to us. Mm -hmm. That's right. That is their legal right, and they do have that opportunity. But, and, and again, that's a very appropriate thing, but my problem is that you have to wait until you've got evidence of damage, and then you've got to sue. Uh -huh. you know, you've got to prove, prove yeah. that you're harming something. You know, I would almost prefer that there was another way, like we're going to keep checking all the time, and you're, you're never going to get to a point where you do any harm. But we're at a point where they get to proceed, and if harm is done, then they can stop. Now, the tribe does have an opportunity to go to court, much as they did when it came to the, the fishing rights, saying, this lawmaking process and this rulemaking that we that the state of Wisconsin engaged in violates our treaty. Not our treaty rights, violates the terms of the treaty. And they were found, they, the result was ruled in the favor of the tribes. The tribes could do that if we continue as we're doing now and there is no direct consultation. Um, the tribes could say, we want, we're going to sue because you're violating the treaty. And, but who wants, you know, who wants to go back to the boat landing days? I mean, I don't want that. I, I, I just wish and I hope for people to act responsibly and respectfully now, ahead of time, and not be forced to do it in court. Yeah. It, it should happen ahead of time. It should happen now. And, and so that we don't have to get into that confrontational kind of thing, which, ju which is harmful. It's just harmful to people and to communities. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to change the subject.